how's it going? My name is Miss Haley from Code Speak Labs, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to be putting our racing skills to the test. That's right, y'all, you heard me. We're going to be building a racing game in Scratch. So, get ready, everybody, because the competition looks a little rough out there. You ready? Let's go. All right, everybody, we're gonna jump straight into the coding project today. So right now you should have a brand new Scratch project open with our lovely friend Scratchy, the cat on uh, the stage over here. All right, so let's get into building this racing game. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pick one backdrop and two sprites. Do you remember how to pick a backdrop? Let me remind you. So we're gonna go down to the bottom right hand corner and if I blow up my screen a little bit, you should see two circular buttons. We're gonna click the second one. So take about 30 seconds to pick your backdrop. I think for me, I'm going to pick the boardwalk backdrop. And there we go. Our lovely Scratchy the Cat is on our boardwalk. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick two sprites for our project. So we need two sprites to be racing against each other. If you don't wanna use Scratchy the Cat, totally fine. We can get rid of him in just one click with the garbage can button. So to get rid of him, just give that a click and he is gone. We're gonna go down to the bottom right hand corner again and click the choose a sprite button. So remember, two sprites. So when you're picking your sprites, for our racing game, it's important that our sprite that we choose has costumes. So what do I mean by costumes? So if you hover over the sprite, you should be able to see some sort of motion or animation. That means that your sprite has a costume. So for example, Scratchy the Cat is moving. We see him doing movement. Um, we're gonna give him a click. So take the next couple of seconds to pick two sprites with costumes. So I'm gonna pick Scratchy the cat, keep it classic, you know. And then I think I want to do a dog. So let's see if he has some movement. I hover over the sprite and he does. Look, we see a tongue and then he gets rid of the tongue. So yeah, he has a costume. So let's, I'm gonna pick him. But feel free to pick anything that you want. All right, so we're gonna click the first sprite in our racing game. The first thing that we're gonna drag in is a block called when green flag clicked. Do you remember what this does? This is basically just a way to trigger our program. So anytime we click the green flag, something is going to happen. And what do we want to happen? We actually want our sprites to start at the beginning of our race. So we're gonna code that together. We're gonna go into the motion section and we're gonna drag a block called go to X and Y. So right now there's probably random numbers inside of there, but don't worry, we're gonna change that. We're going to drag our sprites where we want them to start for the race. So I'm gonna take my Scratchy the Cat. I'm gonna drag him. I kind of like him like right there. All right, perfect, he's in position. We should now see that our X and Y coordinates have changed. So X and Y coordinates are basically just numbers that tell us where to find the sprite on the screen. So I see X is negative 196 and I see Y is 16. I'm gonna take those two numbers and put it in the go to X block. So let's do that. Awesome. We're gonna do the exact same thing for our other sprite. So I'm gonna give my second sprite a click. I'm gonna go into the events section. I'm gonna drag the one green flag clicked button and I'm gonna go back into motion and drag the go to X block. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. So take your sprite, click on it, and drag it where you want to start for the race. And I kinda want my dog to start farther away from the cat, so I'm gonna put him right there. All right, perfect. Oop, let's drag him a little back. All right, so my numbers are X is negative 196, and y is negative 174. All right, so I'm gonna take the x and y coordinates that I just made by dragging the sprite and putting, I'm gonna put those two numbers inside of the go to x block. So I'm gonna take a negative 196, 
put it inside the go to x block and I'm going to take the negative 174 and put it in the y section. And if you're like Miss Haley, I forgot where the negative sign is, don't worry. If you can find the number zero on your keyboard, so it should be somewhere in the right upper hand corner of your keyboard, you're gonna go to the button right next to it on the right side and just give it a click. The next thing we're gonna do for our race game is we're going to build a finish line. And you're like, well, how, do I, how do I build a finish line? We're going to draw it by creating a sprite. So we're gonna go down to the bottom right hand corner again. We're gonna hover over the sprite button, but don't click it. We're actually going to go to the paintbrush. There we go. Click the paintbrush. And so we're going to click the line tool on our screen. So it's right underneath the paint bucket button. I'm going to click the line tool and I'm just going to make this line a little bit thicker than it usually is because right now it's a little thin if you just drag it. So I'm going to go to the outline box. So it should say outline and I'm going to change the number right next to it. So I'm gonna make it, let's, I'm gonna make it a 10. And I'm gonna click my mouse anywhere on the top of the screen. Preferably it should be right above the middle center. You should see like a little, um, like a little target in the middle of your screen. So we're gonna click our mouse and we're gonna drag it to the bottom of our screen right there, perfect. All right, so to change the color of our finish line, we're gonna click the selector tool. So it should be a little arrow right where my mouse is hovering over. We're gonna give that a click. I'm gonna click the finish line and I'm gonna choose the button that says outline. And right now we can move these sliders around and we should see that the colors are changing on our screen. So if I move my brightness all the way to the right side, we should see the colors changing. So you're gonna move the sliders until you find a color that you like for your finish line. For me, I'm gonna see if I can try to find a red. All right, move my slider to the right, there we go. Perfect, and now my finish line is red. Awesome, so once you finish coloring your finish line, we're gonna go into the code tab. So right next to the costumes tab, we're gonna click code and your finish lines should be on the backdrop that you selected. So we're gonna actually move it to where you want it. So I'm gonna take my finish line and I'm gonna drag it a little farther, you know, give my cat and my dog a little bit more room to race and perfect. We're gonna give these sprites some movement now, right? Cause right now if we click the green flag, they're not doing anything. They're not moving. So we got to give them some movement so they can do this race. All right, let's do it. I'm going to click the first sprite and I'm going to go back into the events section. And in order to give our sprite some movement, we're going to drag a button called when space key pressed. So I'm going to drag this button here. And I'm going to go back into motion and I'm going to drag a button that says move 10 steps. And after I connect that block, I'm gonna go into the purple section called looks. And we're gonna find a block that says next costume. There we go, I found it and I'm gonna drag that. So what we're doing is we're telling the computer that every time we press our space key, we're gonna have our cat move 10 steps and it's gonna change its costume. So what do we mean when we say change its costume, right? If we click the green flag and I press the space key, Oh, what do you see? The cat's walking, right? Perfect. That's exactly what we want. We want to see our cat actually making those running movements and strides. So if we actually go into our costumes tab, we should see that the two costumes that our cat has. And the more that we press our space button, the more that we see our cat is going to just keep switching the costumes and it's gonna look like it's moving. Awesome, we're gonna do the exact same thing for our second sprite. So we're gonna click our second sprite, which is my dog. I'm gonna go back into events and I'm gonna drag the same blocks, but we're gonna change it just a little bit. So you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna drag one space key pressed, gonna go into motion, drag move 10 steps, and then I'm going to drag the next costume block. Here we go. All right, so we don't want to overlap 
the space key button with both of our sprites. Because if we press the space key, we want to make sure that only the cat moves. So we're going to click the drop down menu right where it says space and we're going to just pick another button so we can give, you know, the dog his own button for his movements. So I'm going to actually use, I'm going to use the right arrow. Awesome. So when we click the green flag, we should see the dog move if we click the right arrow on our keyboard. Let's test it out. Oh, there he goes. His tongue is wild and out. I love it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check for who reaches the finish line first, right? Because, you know, whoever reaches the finish line first is the winner of our game. So in order to do that, we're going to drag in a block called an if block and we can find it in our controls section. So it's the orange circle on the left hand side and it is a block called if then. And then we're going to go into a blue section called sensing and we're going to drag a block called touching. So it says touching mouse pointer right now, but we're going to change that. And then the last block we're going to drag in is some sort of say block. We want to give them speaking abilities. If they win, they want to cheer and they want to say, I won the race. So we're going to do just that. We're going to drag in this say block. Let's find it. Say hello for two seconds. So we're going to change this a little bit. Instead of saying if touching mouse pointer, we're going to say if our sprite is touching the finish line, right? Because if they're touching the finish line, that means they have crossed and finished the race. So we're going to take the drop down menu and we're going to say if touching finish line. So it should just basically be the name of whatever you named your finish line sprite. So if your sprite is named sprite one or something random like that, you can just change it by taking the text inside of our sprite box and just changing it. So I'm just going to name it finish line. And then we should see it inside of our drop down menu. Perfect. And then we're gonna change the hello text to something more suitable. So I'm gonna say I won. There we go. All right, so when the green flag is clicked and we've started the race, the computer is going to check for who crosses that finish line first. So if the cat touches the finish line, he's gonna say I won. So when we look at the if statement, that is all we're doing. We're just checking to see if our sprite is touching that finish line. And we're going to do the exact same thing for our second sprite. So let's do that. We're going to test out whether or not our sprites are able to move. So I'm going to use my right hand for my dog sprite, which is the right arrow key. And I'm going to use my left hand for the cat sprite, which is the space key. And let's see who's going to win the race. Then they're off. Going, going, going. I finished the race. I won. So you see, once our cat and our dog finally touched that red finish line, we see that they have some sort of text bubble, which is exactly what we coded. We wanted the cat to say, I won, and we wanted the dog to say, I finished the race. So give your screen a check and make sure that when your sprites cross that finish line, that they are able to shout that they won the race. So we finished coding our racing game project. If you want to kick this up a little bit harder and make it a little bit more challenging for your sprites, what you can do is you can add in some sort of countdown before the race starts, or you can add in some sort of backdrop change when the race ends. So if the cat wins, change the backdrop so it says cat wins. If the dog wins, change the backdrop at the end so it says the dog wins. So this is just some, so this is just a way to get you started in making a basic race game, but feel free to get creative and add your own touch of, you know, creativity to the to the racing game and make it a little bit harder for your users and your sprites to win the game. Welcome back racers and congratulations on reaching the end of the finish line. You know what that means, right? Cue the virtual applause. Yeah. Woo! 
Thank you guys so much for coding along with me today. If you like this project, make sure to like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you're interested in signing up for online classes with CodeSpeak Labs, link down below and inside the description. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. This is Coach Haley from CodeSpeak Labs, logging off. See ya!